Hey everyone, what's up? So it's official, Crawford versus Madrim <laughs> Madrimov. Um, I was doing some film and I already came out with a video on this dude. Uh, it's a tougher fight than a guy like Jaron in his boots. Of course, it's tougher than an Errol Spence or those type of fights. Uh, even a Fondera, so I think this is a very uh, good matchup. Um, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna get a GGG, or GGG, I don't know why I said that, but you're gonna get a me machine type Crawford type fight. This guy's not there to lay down. Uh, he's very young. We've talked about this before. He's gonna go in there to win. He's not gonna lay down. As far as I can tell, there's no trickery uh, involved such as rehydration clauses and all this other nonsense like we see other people do in this sport today. Uh, Crawford, he's a true warrior, regardless uh, of the crap that people wanna talk or not. You understand. Um, <laughs> uh, like I said, man, uh, I always talk about the proxy race war on this channel, on the internet, and to me, you're all the same. And I don't, you know, neglect my own prejudices and biases, but typically, you know, I don't like fake fighters. I don't like fake people. Uh, that is one bias I can clearly admit to you guys. Um, and this is a very good, solid fight, whether people want to admit it or not, especially for today's standards. As far as the undercard, what more can you say? Um, it's very stacked. This is probably one of the better undercards probably that we've seen. I, I can't even remember a card this stacked before. Typically, even the co-main events would be kind of garbage uh, in the past five years easily. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's all around solid package. Again, uh, Bud, he's making moves. Uh, boxing is being forced to have to kind of go back to more grassroots type uh, movement than this nonsense that they've been doing these past years. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is the type of card, this is the type of main event that you uh, wanna see. Um, you know what I'm saying? We got a guy, he's kind of like a Lomachenko uh, kind of a mix. Well, I'd say kind of like a Vostik Lomachenko for the most part. Has some tricky footwork, uh, has some special effects and things like that. Athleticism, ring IQ. He's also young, things like that. And he's going up against the old dog, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Crawford's touted as a pound for pound number one by a lot of people. Um, still is getting hate, you know, people are still talking crap about this fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh <laughs> I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but you guys see what's going on here. I don't really have to beat a dead horse about this situation. Um, you know, it, it's a nice little fight, you know what I'm saying? Especially coming off like a, I don't know, eight or 10 month layoff or whatever. Was it last August he fought? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, but Crawford, I know he's been in the gym. He's actually been sparring bigger guys and things like that. Uh, we'll see if he's the truth. When I looked at the, the face to face, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Crawford looked like he had him in uh, height, but I think the dude, like I said, maybe had a bigger neck, had a little bit bigger dimensions and things like that. So we're definitely gonna see how Crawford handles his weight and it should give us a more realis realistic picture if he is interested in a Canelo fight down the road. Uh, although I don't think he's gonna get it. Canelo's really uh, shook at this point. He doesn't wanna take any real risks. Uh, he still has uh, PTSD off of what Bivol did to him, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and he's doubling down on his careful, selective matchmaking and opportunistic type matchmaking that he relies on. Um, again, I don't care much for the popularity contest aspect of the sport of boxing. Um, we'll see what the price is for the pay-per-view and all that stuff, um, you know. I'm pretty sure I'll watch this fight, especially if I have the time to do it, uh, even if I have to stream it either or it does not matter. But I, I've typically uh, support fights that, you know, I'm interested in seeing. I bought the two Deontay Wilders, uh, number two and three uh, fights between him and Tyson Fury. I fought, I bought some fights, guys. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie, you know. Um, I also bought the Ortiz versus uh, Me Machine fight. So did a little quick subscription for that month on DAZN back in the day. So if I am interested, I mean, I'm willing to dish out money. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know I'll be watching this fight one way or another, uh, whether it's by streaming or by actually buying the pay-per-view. We'll just see what the options are. And again, the price. But again, this is an overall stack card you're getting. Uh, for today's, uh, you know, stature um 
I think it's pretty good. We haven't seen something like this in years, to be quite honest with you, a card this stacked. Uh, even the the draw baby Miller fight versus uh, Andy Ruiz, I think is going to be a good fight. Uh, at one point, they tried to charge uh, people pay-per-view for Andy, Andy Ruiz as a standalone. But uh, again, uh, that didn't work out too well for PBC. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, they're trying to uh, cater to multiple masses that might have an interest in this fight, of course. You got a group of haters, uh, you know, when you're polarizing, that's always a help as well. We're not saying that Terrence Crawford is this big seller, uh, but it doesn't hurt that he's polarizing and these haters, they'll typically tune in just to see if he loses or not, you know, one of those type of deals. So we'll see, you know, maybe he'll do around 200,000 pay-per-view buys, 250 maybe. I'm not too sure. I really don't care about that stuff anyways. Um, Cause I know, you know, boxing has done a number on itself. Uh, it just continues to shoot itself in its own foot time and time again. Uh, but this is actually a step in the right direction. Um, I think this puts everything more in perspective as well. You know what I'm saying? You're not here spending all this crazy money just on the main event alone. You understand you still got all the other overhead to deal with. The undercard, um, you know, the venue and things like that, you know. Um, this is how boxing needs to be operating moving forward. I should not have... Uh, I'll, I'll give this as an example, but Errol Spence versus uh, Old Boy, the Cuban, I forgot his name already, uh, Ugas, and then you had uh, Gamboa and Isaac Cruz as your co-main event. To me, that's just outright utterly ridiculous. This is something that they need to do more consistently. It's going to keep your fighters more busy as well. Have your cards stack, and people, they just got to accept their role and know who they are and where they're at, truly. You know what I'm saying? Um <laughs> You know, but you're also networking the fighters that you want to showcase later on in the future as well. So you have them all in one card. You bring them all together, you know. And again, we've seen this even with guys like Bernard Hopkins versus Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, they'd be, you know, Bernard would be on the undercard for one pay-per-view. And then they'll have like a same day, you know, type of deal where, you know, one guy will fight, but it's still on the same night, even if it's not even in the same location. You understand they were just more smarter with their marketing and things back then, especially when they had a fight planned uh, for the future, you know, and you're trying to hype those up. But even uh, Oscar De La Hoya, when we all knew he was fighting Manny Pacquiao, what did he do? He moved down to 154, had a fight with Steve Forbes and put it on free TV, guys. I mean, to me, this is smart. You're still collecting money in the process. You know what I'm saying? You're not just trying to always have your egg in one basket and acting like every event uh, is your last heist. You understand Th this is actually investing into the sport. This is actually investing into your fighters. You're getting them exposure. You know, although it's still going to be pay-per-view, it's still going to be kind of exclusive. But this is a step in the right direction. So I can't really hate on it too much. You know what I'm saying? Um, I might do a film study for this fight. Um, I'll have to look at more film and things like that. Um, it's not like I just push these things out and come out with those videos, like just on a whim. Um, I literally will sit there and just watch fights and look at anything I can find, uh, what kind of weaknesses and strengths and things like that. And then I, I'll typically, uh, go over it. Uh, but what's funny though, is I always, uh, free flow. I app, you know, I don't format the film studies. So you get my, uh, initial reaction as I, you know, go through it, you know, it, it's ab lived for the most part. So I'm just sitting there talking, uh, again, I don't really format the stuff. Um, but, uh, that's all we got for now. Uh, this is a step in the right direction. Again, this is what bo boxing needs to do. It needs to start re you know, always reinvesting itself, just like UFC, you understand they'll sit there, they'll have three hour cards, you know, and people they're there at the bar from the time of start, even preliminaries <laughs> to the end of the pay-per-view and you're done. And that's usually around 11, almost midnight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, uh, boxing, it needs to get back to that point. Um, remember the grassroots movement part of it, instead of trying to act like you're just, you got these stars and you're doing all this stuff when you're really not, you know, we don't need to fake it till we make it anymore. Um, we got to start, you know, going back to good old fashioned business. Like I've said in past videos, one plus one equals two. You don't have to do all this Wiley Coyote bait and switch uh, nonsense that, you know, these people do today. It's just foolish, 
uh, foolishness to me. Uh, very simple, you know, boxing. Again, it, it may not be as old, but it basically just is as old as, um, you know, uh, prostitution. You don't have to reinvent the wheel for that type of business. You understand that business is already uh, <laughs> tried and true. You don't really have to do too much, guys. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Um, and we'll just see what's up in the future, right? Bye.